So yesterday I was reliving my teen years and listening to a bunch of scene music, and I heard that My Chemical Romance released a new song, and I thought, you know what? I love Xiao. So today I'm bringing you an updated Xiao guide. I've had Xiao since his very first banner and I've been playing him on and off since then, but I've also been playing Genshin since day one and making some of the best guides for it and I really don't want to stop that now. So today we're going to be going over Xiao's best build with weapons and artifacts, kit, and teams. These videos are always long, so I've put timestamps in the description just in case you need to skip around. And just so you guys know, I do go live a few days a week at twitch.tv slash Braxophone. You should definitely come hang out. And lastly, if you enjoy these kinds of videos, let me know in the comments below. With that being said, Said, my name is Braxophone, and let's take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Slick Deals. Slick Deals is an absolutely free browser extension that saves you money when you shop online. When you're browsing with Slick Deals, the extension will automatically show you tons of offers, codes, and coupons from the site and company you're shopping with. Something that's really nice about the offers that Slick Deals is going to show you is that good deals are always upvoted by the community, so you're able to tell which deals are the best and the most trustworthy. I've been using it to shop around for a bit, and I've seen tons of amazing deals, including a lot of coupon codes. There's even more deals on Slick Deals deals.net where you can find all that it has to offer in one place. Slick Deals is the eighth largest shopping destination in the United States with more than 1 billion visits annually and it really shows on their website. I started working out again recently so I've been looking at brands like Nike and Under Armour for example and later today I'm going to be making a purchase from Under Armour because they got discounted shirts. If that's something you resonate with, if you like saving money, click the link in the description right below the video. It's going to take you straight to the Slick Deals extension. It's super easy to get. You just follow the link, click add to browser whether that's Chrome, Firefox, Opera GX, most most browsers are going to work. Once it's added, just click the Slick Deals icon at the top of any page and start finding deals. Once again, link is in the description. I definitely recommend checking out Slick Deals. Now let's get back to the video. Xiao's kit, although it's wordy, is actually really easy to understand. First off, his elemental skill is a dash that deals animo damage and it can teleport through most enemies. It generates three particles and it has two charges, which all things considered isn't actually that good for energy generation. And like my parents, both charges are separate, so you don't actually get both back after the 10 second cooldown, you're only going to get one every 10 seconds. Whenever you use his dashes, the particles actually take a second to reach Xiao. So if you have your burst up, you can use his dashes and then his burst right after, and all of the energy from the dash will go into his energy bank and not actually over cap. Also, when he's in his burst, his dashes don't generate energy, so you want to make sure that you use his dashes before his burst most of the time. Speaking of his burst, his burst costs 70 energy, so you definitely are going to need those particles. When you use it, it drains Xiao's HP and applies a multiplier to his damage while converting it all to animo damage. When his burst is active, he's able to high jump, which lets him spam plunge damage, and the plunge damage is going to depend on how high Xiao is, with there being two damage types for high and low plunge. You should always aim to plunge high since the multiplier is so much better and it doesn't really take much more time. Spamming low plunge won't get you as much damage as waiting just a quarter of a second longer for high plunge. Now it's good to know that his burst isn't actually something that deals damage by itself, so noblesse and emblem aren't going to actually work, it just enhances his current scalings. It lasts for about 15 seconds but has an 18 second cooldown which will give you time and a reason to rotate through your supports. His first passive just increases all of his damage the longer he's in his burst and his second passive increases his skill damage the more of them that are being used in a row up to a max of three stacks. To be completely honest, his second passive isn't really super useful. I wouldn't even really worry about timing your dashes for it. Just use your dashes to generate energy for Xiao. Now something you can do that's pretty cool with Xiao is that you can use a normal attack or a normal and charged attack before you jump and plunge. And technically those two are going to net you higher damage than just spamming plunge over and over. So if you want to increase your Xiao damage, practice using a normal attack, charged attack, and then jump plunge. Or if that takes too long for you, if you just don't like that play style, you can do one normal attack before you jump plunge and even that will add a little bit of damage to your burst window. For talent priority you want to make sure that you get his basic attack up first followed by his burst and then followed by his skill. The main reason is that his basic attack is the main source of his damage, and his burst is just a multiplier on the basic attack, so you have to have a high basic attack level for the damage enhancement to be worth it. So before we get into weapons and artifacts in this video, I want to go over constellations and whether or not it's worth pulling for him on his rerun if you already have him. Before you roll for Xiao's constellations, really make sure that you know what they do. A lot of these constellations seem good, but in reality most of them are actually near useless, namely constellations 2 through 5. First off, constellation 1 is going to give you an extra Xiao dash. This is essentially just extra damage and battery, but the big problem with it is that the cooldown isn't independent of the others. Essentially you'd have to wait a total of 30 seconds to get all three dashes back, so it only ends up being useful at the very start of the fight, but then it loses all of its value after. 
Constellation 2 gives Shao 25% more energy recharge when he's off the field. You probably already see the problem with this, but if you don't, essentially it's just a low amount of energy recharge and it also matters less because he's not the one picking up particles anyways, so his share of energy is already lower. It's not really worth the investment. Constellation 3 is going to level up his skill by 3 levels. Constellation 4 is a joke, and honestly, I don't even really want to talk about it. Constellation 5 increases its burst level by 3, and Constellation 6 is actually good. It makes it so that when Xiao hits two enemies with a plunging attack in his burst, he gets one elemental skill charge back. For the next second after hitting those enemies, his skill doesn't cost a charge, meaning you can dash two to three times between each plunge. Against multiple enemies, it makes Xiao extremely powerful and arguably the strongest damage dealer in the game, competing with C6 Ito and C6 Raiden. But be aware that this constellation is essentially useless useless in combat against a single boss or enemies that don't stick together. Basically, unless you're C6ing Xiao, I don't recommend going for constellations on him at all, since most of them are little to no value. And in general, having a wider character roster will be better anyways. So with that in mind, I would advise against constellations. Real quick, I just wanted to go over weapons before we talk about artifact sets because there's a couple things you should know. First off, Xiao is dripped out, he only wants the most expensive and best looking pole arms, which makes him not super free to play friendly as far as weapons go. If you're completely free to play or don't have any 5 star pole arms, your best options are going to be White Tassel and Prototype Star Glitter, and the big issues with them is that they're both significantly worse than most other options. For example, Jade Spear is quite literally almost twice as good. In some instances, it can literally double your damage. On top of that, the only other character that would use White Tassel is Hu Tao, and in some instances if you're coping really really hard you could use it on Rosaria, but it's just not super flexible. If you don't have any of the options I'm about to go over, you can opt for White Tassel or Prototype Star Glitter, but any of these next weapons are going to be better. Staff of Homa and Jade Spear are both best in slot options for Zhao. Which weapon is better will depend on your team count, buffs, and substats, but if you have both and you have another character that can use Staff of Homa, then definitely give Zhao Jade Spear, otherwise it's up to you. Outside of that, Calamity Queller is actually pretty good because of its base attack. A lot of people are quick to dismiss it because its passive doesn't work super well with every character, but the base stats on it are good, and for someone like Xiao who you want a lot of attack percent stats on, it's competitive with Staff of Homa above 50% HP. Vortex Vanquisher is also incredibly good on Xiao with Zhongli since that shield isn't likely to bust, and it's a massive attack increase on Xiao. Skyward Spine is also solid for the energy recharge it gives, along with the high base stats and crit rate. Surprisingly, even with an attack percent sands, Engulfing Lightning is also pretty good. Now as far as 4 star weapons go, they include Deathmatch, Black Cliff, Lithic Spear, and finally if you don't have anything else, Wavebreaker and Favonius Lance. Do note that Wavebreaker and Favonius Lance are also pretty low damage, better than the free to play options, but still not really ideal either. This is one of the biggest issues that Xiao faces if you're trying to maximize his damage and make him a top unit like he can be, you really do need gear for him, and if that's something you're not really willing to do then I don't recommend pulling for him. Though Xiao isn't super easy to build in the weapon department, he is easy to build artifacts wise, so let's move on to those. Before AR45, I don't recommend actively farming artifacts since you're not guaranteed to get a 5 star one until AR45. However, you can still improve your Xiao's damage by using the right stats. If you just so happen to have pieces from the Berserker set, or any 2 piece set that gives 18% attack bonus, that'll pair well with your Xiao. For stats, you want attack percent on your Sands, Goblet, and Circlet, because most of the time you're not going to be able to build crit until later in the game anyways, basically just until you get to AR45 and can start farming the 5 star artifacts. If you happen to have an Animo damage Goblet though, that's find two. Again, I wouldn't really actively farm anything till AR45, but if you have an Animo Damage Goblet, that'll actually be better than your attack percent one. But the easiest thing is going to be just to stack all of the attack you can on him for now, and once you get to AR45, then check out the next build. Once you're past AR45, you have quite a few set options for Xiao, though over half of them are the same effect. In 2.6, Xiao got his own artifact set that basically buffed his attack stat through the roof. This is the Vermilion Hereafter set, and it's his best in slot option, farmable in the domain in the chasm. The reason why it's best in slot is because it just gives him a ton of attack bonus whenever he loses HP, which is the entirety of his burst. Unfortunately though, you do need to have the 4 piece set to get the most out of it, and 4 piece sets can be hard to farm. So given that you may not be able to get a good 4 piece 
piece set for him. You can use any combination of 18% attack bonus two piece sets and also throw in two pieces of Viridescent Venerer. Since there aren't any artifacts that lower animal resistance or defense on enemies, your best choices are to just increase Xiao's personal stats with any of these two piece sets or four piece Vermilion hereafter. Just in case you were wondering, a set like Noblesse that increases burst damage doesn't affect Xiao's damage, since his burst is damage conversion rather than a damage dealing ability. Same thing applies to Emblem of Severed Fate. For stats, things on Xiao are actually pretty simple. You're going to want an attack percent sans, animo damage goblet, and a crit rate or damage circlet, whichever one gets you closest to a 1 to 2 ratio of crit rate to crit damage. In some cases, an attack percent goblet can be slightly better than an animo damage one, but it mostly depends on your substats. If you don't have very good crit stats on an animo damage goblet, but you have really good crit stats on an attack percent goblet, it can sometimes be worth it. Now, I don't really know which content creator started spreading this misinformation like wildfire, but an energy recharge sans is never going to be better than an attack percent sans on Xiao. When Xiao's new set came out, a bunch of players started talking about how it would let you use an energy recharge sans on Xiao instead, since the four piece effect gives you a ton of attack. The thing is though, Xiao still wants attack. With substats or team comp alone, you can get Xiao's burst back quickly. If you force an energy recharge sans, you're going to make your damage a lot worse than it could be. You guys don't have to trust me, but I've been making these videos for a year and a half now and consistently clearing the hardest content, so take that as you will. You should aim to rely on substats for energy recharge. As for how much energy recharge, it depends on the team, but usually if you have a Favonius weapon or another character that's a battery, 130% energy recharge will be enough. And lastly, for substats, you're going to want to prioritize energy recharge to 130% to help Xiao get his burst up consistently, but then crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent are going to be the best stats for you. Because of Xiao wanting certain buffs and dedicated batteries to play his best, his teams are usually pretty specific, but in the right teams he's insanely strong. So now that we've talked about his stats, let's move on to teams. Xiao's teams are fairly specific if you want to get the most out of him. He needs a battery most of the time if you want to always have his burst. If you want him to not suffer from energy issues, you can run a team of Xiao, Sucrose, Zhongli, and Albedo. Sucrose will generate a ton of particles for Xiao and even pull enemies together in some instances. Zhongli's going to shred enemy resistances and give a tenacity attack buff and has a beefy shield that's going to protect Xiao when he's low HP. Albedo's going to deal a ton of bonus geo damage and geo resonance will increase Xiao's damage as well. The team is really solid overall with the main caveat being that it's expensive to build. If you have energy issues still, you can give Zhongli Favonius Lance and that should basically solve it. Lastly, you can substitute Sucrose for Jean if you want better healing and damage, but I wouldn't recommend Kazuha or Venti since they're just so much better on other teams. Also, it's worth mentioning that if you have Constellation 4 Jean, you are going to be able to get Animo Shred, which is extremely good for Zhao. Next up, if you substitute the Geo Bros for Bennett and Shang Ling, you can get a double Pyro team that's going to increase everyone's attack with Pyro Resonance, as well as give massive buffs from Bennett. Shang Ling also dishes out a ton of damage on her own. She's one of the best Pyro carries in the game and definitely shouldn't be underestimated. Now, it is worth noting that this team in general is not going to generate a ton of energy, and you may run into some energy issues with Shang Ling if she's unbuilt. But with an Emblem of Severed Fate build with something like the Catch, your Shang Ling should be fine. Now, the last team I want to quickly show you guys is the Xiao National Setup, with Xiao, Bennett, Xiangling, and Xingxiao. With this team, you're able to drive reactions with Xiao's high damage. Imagine using Sucrose for Swirl damage, but each Animo hits doing 10 to 14k. Or even better, if you're plunging, 40k. Because 18% attack isn't really that much bonus, if you substitute a 2 and 2 combo for a 4-piece Viridescent Venera set, you can actually improve the damage of your Xiangling and Xingxiao with Xiao. And as much as I hate to say it, because it sounds cursed, using basic and charged attacks with this setup actually isn't that bad. If you're using the optimal combo that involves normal attack, charged attack, and then plunging, you're going to be able to hit Xingxiao Rain Swords every single time you use a normal attack before your plunge, which means that you're going to be getting that extra damage. Whether or not this combo is best for Xiao National is going to depend on the content, but I wanted to let you guys know anyways. Also, if you did manage to get Yolan this patch, Yolan can substitute for Xingxiao, you will just have to make sure that you have a lot of energy going into that spot. And real quick, right before we close out the team section, I wanted to mention Raiden and Fischl. Both of these characters are actually decent for Xiao because they generate a lot of energy and deal decent damage. I wouldn't recommend them with double pyro since Xiao knocks enemies away and overload certainly wouldn't help that, but playing Raiden or Fischl instead of Sucrose or Jean is a solid option if you enjoy those units, and it'll give you some more reaction soup.
Zhao is an amazingly strong damage dealer. Unfortunately, without easily accessible Animo Shred in the game, his power level doesn't have much potential for growth, unlike characters with amplifying reactions. He also has some energy issues that limit his team options. But to be honest, he's still very strong and will be a top unit for a while. It's unfortunate that his weapons aren't free-to-play friendly, and for that reason, I have a hard time calling him a free-to-play friendly unit. But a dedicated player can still get a lot of value out of him. The fact that he can use a bunch of two-piece sets and still dish out high damage per second makes him a great overall unit, and if you have any of the weapons I listed in the weapons section, he's definitely not a bad pull. I hope this guide taught you something about Xiao, and if you found it helpful, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe as well if you enjoyed, it really helps me out. And once again, I go live on Twitch a few days a week at twitch.tv slash Praxophone. Be sure to drop a follow and turn on notifications if you want to come hang out. Thanks for watching everyone, and good luck on your pulses patch.